Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. Today we're going to be making antler needles and we're going to use flint tools to do it. Now I've selected an antler that I don't think is going to make good things like picks, but it has got a very long straight section to it. And this bit here I think is going to make really nice needles. The very end point I'm going to keep for an all. So the tools we're going to use today are flint flakes. None of these have been napped specifically for antler working. They're just flakes that I've acquired from a flint napping friend of mine. And all we're going to do is saw through the antler. Now the easiest way to do this is to work around it little by little. Just start a good scratch all the way around. And then once it's biting, just work away at it. Now it's worth trying different blades to find one that suits the type of material that you're working on. That one's biting in quite nicely so I'm going to stick with that. So this is a fairly solid flake. It's got not exactly a serrated edge but it's certainly got enough texture on the edge to act as a saw. You could of course use a modern saw blade or a bushcraft knife to do this. The important thing is to take your time with it. The first few scratches are often a little bit irregular but once you've got a groove started you can work away at it quite happily and just work all the way around until we get to a point where we can snap off the antler. Now a top tip when you're working antler, you can certainly work it dry, it just takes a little bit of time. Once you've got your groove started, if you damp that material, give it a minute or so, and you'll find that that little bit of extra moisture will help the cut go much faster. You're raising less dust as well, which is always better for your lungs. Any bone or antler work that can be a little bit on the dusty side, you might want to consider wearing a mask for or a cloth over your nose. But just damping the antler, just quite gently, really does make a difference in how quickly you're going to be able to saw through. Keep working all the way around and we'll have a look at it when we're through the outer layer. I've been working for about 10 minutes on this. I've swapped flint several times. I generally find that as the groove deepens, it's worth changing your flint to make sure you get into it properly. And what we're starting to see is the dark pith, the dark centre of the handle is showing almost all the way around. It's not quite there yet. Showing really well here. Now, when we're around properly, we should be able to break this off with a good blow from a stone. I'm going to try it. I'm not convinced it's going to try just yet. And I do apologise in advance if this shakes the camera because it probably will. So you want a good hammer stone. I've got a granite cobble here. Line this up well. Give it a good blow. Let's see what happens. Not there yet. I need to keep going round until that groove is a little bit deeper. And then with luck, a really good wallop will snap this off. We'll give it another five minutes, see what happens. I'll just damp down the groove, that always helps. Just keep dabbling water in and that'll really help you get your blades in to peel off nice slithers of material. Okay, a couple more minutes of grooving and actually this has pretty much gone all by itself. I lent on it, I was going to show you how to whack it with a rock, but I lent on it and it, it went so once you're into that core, it's really not that difficult. Our tricky bit before was we weren't quite through this outer layer of antler. Now this was obviously quite a young deer. The antler's not terribly thick, but for needles this is going to be absolutely fine. This is the bit we want. I'll put the rest aside. This end I'm going to cut off probably about here. Once that's sharpened, which will be done very easily, on an abrasive stone. That will make a really comfortable awl in the hand. It'll fit nicely, easy to put pressure on. A very fine sharp point can be used for poking holes and things like um, bark or leather. But this is the bit that I want today. I'm going to take off another section and then we're going to break grooves along the length of it to take the antler blanks off. Alright, so I'm almost through all the way around the 
second cut that I want to make. This is the section that's going to make our needles. I'm going to have one more go at breaking this with a rock on camera. Again, apologies for any shake. If it doesn't work, I'll snap it off camera and we'll come back to it. Let's see what happens. One, two, three. Perfect. There we are. So there's our needle blank. Now from here on in, it is just a case of taking whichever flint works best for you and you, it's worth changing for the periodically. Grooving some straight lines down your flint, that's a bit wobbly, we'll soon sort it out. Take your time getting that first line just where you want it. It's always a lot easier once the initial line has been grooved. And then dunk it in water, oops, without knocking the camera too much. Keep reinforcing that line. Try different sections of your flint, that was quite good. If you can get a nice curvy edge, you can sometimes scrape curls off your antler. But take a few moments, establish your straight lines first. And we want to do two parallel lines about the thickness of the needle. And just like we did splitting off the section of blank, you want to cut pretty much all the way through that solid outer layer of antler. So you're just exposing the pith. That's the bit we don't need. That's the bit that's going to make our antler. So back in a second when I've deepened these lines. This groove and splinter technique is probably one of the oldest methods of working antler that we can discern from archaeological evidence. Particularly when you work it wet, you get very nice little ribbons of material that come away. And once your groove is deep enough, it's not a difficult thing. It's a little time consuming. So it took me probably ooh, 15 minutes to cut through my antler to start with. I'm about five minutes in to grooving this now. And I'm starting to get a really nice groove coming along. I'll just try and change angles, see if you can see what's happening a little bit better. So as I move the flint along, the slightly damped antler, so it's only barely soaked, it's really just dunked every few moments, is just helping to control the dust and give me little ribbons of material that are coming away. Now, just like when we split the antler, I need to get through to this thinner layer before we can try levering off our blank. So I'm going to progress that and then I'll come back to you when we're just about there. We're not far off done on this now. I can start to see the darker layer of the inner cortex showing through. And just to give you an idea of how easy this becomes when it's soaked and you've got a good groove lined up, you should be able to see the amount of material that's coming out now when I'm using a fairly typical small blade. It's not overly sharp anymore using antler. It really does blint, blunt your flints but it doesn't matter for this. Now, if I was doing this with dry antler this would be taking me at least twice as long. Wet working really does speed up and controls when well, you get the mess from this but it really does control the dusty part of the mess. Make sure you're properly through before you try splintering off the sides. There's nothing worse than snapping a needle blank where an extra 30 seconds work would have resolved everything. But just keep changing your angles. Keep working away at those grooves. You'll have a fairly good sense of when it's worth trying the splintering part. I reckon I've got another five minutes work to do on this one. So we've grooved all the way through really, really strongly. You can see that central dark cortex very well all the way down. Now what we need to do now is get this needle blank off. This either works brilliantly or it goes horribly wrong. Now I'm going to try doing it using an antler spud. Now a spud is just a wedge. In this case, it's on an off cut of antler. It's just been sharpened. I'm going to line it up in the end, and because the cortex is quite well soaked now, that tends to wiggle in quite well. I'm going to start just wiggling it to start with, see if I can leave that by hand. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to give it a whack with a hammer, which again 
may or may not show up on camera. Uh, probably not. We'll try it and we'll see. So I'm getting quite a mushy end here where it's soaked. So I think probably I just need to keep undercutting until I can get some purchase into this to wiggle that free. If it doesn't come, it might mean that I need to cut through just a tiny bit more. There's always a little bit of working this out as you go along with any antler product. Any natural material has its little quirks and sometimes you just need to do a bit more cutting. Right, let's try that again. I'm going to try going in through the side this time. Nope, still not budging. We'll keep at it. Oh, I think that's going. I saw the top end of that move then. Nope. I'm gouging out the middle. I think I need to cut through just a little bit further. I'm not sure if you can see that clearly, but just here, although the cortex is going, I can see just a little tiny bit of solidity there. I think a few more strokes with the blade, then we'll give it a go. And with perseverance, we are getting there. Now, I did a little bit of damage in that first attempt. Can you see how, when it splinted, the crack started travelling up into the bit I wanted? That's all right, it's always worth making your needle blanks a little bit longer than a finished needle. So I need to make sure I get underneath that section. And once it starts coming away, usually it's quite well behaved. So just keep wiggling away at it. And we should, excellent, be able to break off our needle blank. So I've got a little damaged bit there, we're going to break that off. That's still going to make a nice small needle. So all the rest of that is now waste materials. I need to um, trim this down and thin it. I'm going to do a little bit of scraping to get the cortex off and then the next thing I'm going to do is the eye before I put any huge effort into finishing it. So a little bit of damping, nice heavy blade. We'll just scrape away the material that we don't want. All that spongy part has to go. Excellent. That's the blank done. Now it's very tempting to refine the shape at this point, but there's no point until you've got the eye in. So we'll do that next. The eye of the needle is the most critical area and you're going to need a very fine point for that. Now I've got some little tiny flakes of flint here. I may use a big, bigger blade. Make sure that's right before you finish the rest of the shape does make life a lot easier. If it goes horribly wrong or if it ends up lopsided, far better to be able to shape the needle to suit it than have a needle that doesn't feel right in the hand. You're going to need a very fine point. I've got a little flake of flint here. Point of a knife works well. Brand new scalpel blades, also very good for this. And it's the same principle as when we blanked out our needle. You're going to make a little groove. Don't make it too close to the end. Again, if you overshoot, you need a little bit of space. Now, this flake, this flake of flint is so fine that I've just lost a little bit of it. That's not a problem. 
and I'm just going to keep working backwards and forwards, deepening the groove. And when I'm confident I can line it up properly, I'll make the same groove on the back and work from both sides. So it's a combination of a twisting drilling motion, but mostly just very gently rubbing backwards and forwards. Damp it periodically, that really does make a difference. And just wiggle away at that hole. This needle eye is very nearly through now. You can't see it on camera, but if I hold it up to the light, I can see daylight through this gap. So I've mostly been grooving backwards and forwards, dipping it into water periodically. But for the last bit, I'm just going to drill. So I've got a tiny little flake of flint. And I'm just going to rotate that backwards and forwards. It really shouldn't take very long now. I can work it from both sides. I've got to that stage of things. I've got a good groove established, so I know things are in the right place. Any moment now, that feels, that feels quite promising. I think we might be through. Just see if we can clear daylight from this side. Aha, there we go. That's definitely all the way through now. So I've got a successful hole. It's tiny at the moment, but that's easily enlarged. Now it's just a case of finishing. So I'm going to tidy up the eye hole. I'm also going to use flint blades, keep dunking it, and I'm just going to pare down the shape, getting rid of all that cortex on the back and refining the shape to give me a really nice needle. This bit should go quite quickly. I'll be back in a second to show you the finished object. Keep dunking it in water, that really does make a difference. Get that cortex off, refine the shape, widen the eye hole, we're nearly there. And here we are, the very last scrapes have been done. Tiny little scrapes at the end just to refine things. It'll pick up a certain amount of gloss just in this finishing stage. Mostly though it's going to polish as you use it. The oils from your hand, the friction from leather and fabric and fibres, all of that's going to help. Now in an ideal world I'd started off aiming for a rather longer needle. But if you remember I lost a little bit of my blank. So this is quite a dinky needle. This is fine. What I've got in mind for this can use quite a small needle. And if you join me in my next video, I'll show you what I'm going to be using it for. For now though, that's our needle finished. I'm just going to pop it safely into a bit of cloth so that I don't lose it. I have got several more videos planned on prehistoric and early style textiles. I'm going to be using this very needle in the next one. I hope you'll join me for that. If you've enjoyed the videos, please do subscribe to our channel. We're making new ones all the time. If you've got any tips and tricks on working antler with flint tools, do put them in the comments below. The whole point of these videos is to help people share skills and ideas and we can all learn from each other. Until then, happy crafting and I'll see you in the next video.